Hi guys, it is a blissfully stormy day. Ooh, the collapse of global industrial civilization down there. There's the Florida, in the looming Florida drought. It's another day of relief here. It is now Saturday afternoon, April 10th, 2021. I guess I'm a dollar short in a day late on my ecological meltdown roundup rant where we just go over to the pages of mongabay.com check in with uh, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Mongabay to see what is going on on this collapsing planet while the storm moves in to the sunshine state hallelujah so uh, we're going to have a backdrop of stormy days and the collapse. I'm gonna, these squirrels are out running around, so I'm going to put the little squirrel dog down. I love the sound of that rain on that tin roof. So uh, I guess I better talk kind of loud here. Uh, we're going to start over in. Uh, I guess the Indian Ocean, how about that? That really narrows it down. Where we have a red flag in the Indian Ocean. Where we're actually not talking about China, we're talking about the European Union here. Uh, red flag, predatory European ships help push Indian Ocean tuna to the break. I don't believe that China can sit out a story about overfishing. The Indian Ocean yellowfin tuna stock is teetering on the verge of collapse. And some experts say the European Union, which has profited the most from the fishery over decades, should do more to save it. Europe. European Union controlled ships, including those flagged to smaller coastal states like the Seychelles, haul in the lion's share of the Indian Ocean tuna, supplying a market worth billions of dollars. Overfishing by these vessels and the EU's less than ambitious proposal to restore the yellowfin stock has led to allegations of a neo-colonial plunder. There you go. A neo-colonial plunder of resources that many developing nations depend on. Yes, a neo-colonial plunder of resources here in the 21st century. Out with the, uh, all in with the new, well, Last week, you know, uh, I guess uh, Manga Bay has divided the lemons up and the lemons one week, the lemonade the next. Last week we were reporting about how uh, humanity is exceeding all of these planetary boundaries. Uh, but on this episode of the Manga Bay newscast, <coughs> They speak uh, with two uh, copium-soaked apocalyptic, so we can uh, see how though humanity, though humanity exceeds key planetary boundaries, there are many solutions, many solutions to uh, humanity already exceeding key planetary boundaries. Yes, I am quite sure sterilizing the human race is at the top of their list. I'm not going to insult my intelligence or yours. Uh, anyway, all right, we have 3D printers saving injured wildlife. Yes. Alright, so you know, Manga Bay uh, has its own YouTube station, so this week, their video of the week, Fresh Water, 
are we running out of fresh water? One of the planetary boundaries? Well, we are not running out of the of fresh water in the Point Lonesome Swamp. Uh, we are getting a thankful mega dose of fresh water uh, here today, but not sure same can be said for the rest of the planet, but you can go over to Manga Bay's YouTube station and watch that. Okay, what's going on on the zoonotic disease front? Captive lions kept in stressful conditions create perfect recipe for disease. Yes, researchers have identified that captive and wild lions carry 63 pathogens that could result in about 83 diseases. Uh, conservationists have named five diseases that have the potential to spill over into the human population. All right. Uh, animal welfare advocates say that captive lion facilities in South Africa tend to keep their lions in unsanitary, stressful conditions that provide the perfect environment for disease. All right. Well, we have the Brazilian military pulling out of the Amazon rainforest. As Brazil's military pulls out of the Amazon, its legacy is in question. Yes. Uh, guys, I don't know how bad the sound is. We're just going to... Uh, we're just going to turn the camera around. And uh, this is the kitchen at Crazy Crane. Uh, so I don't have to scream as the storm beats on the roof. On April 30th, the Brazilian government will officially end Operation Green Brazil, otherwise known as Operation Blackened Brazil, a military-led campaign that started in August of 2019 to combat the peak of illegal fires in the Amazon. In that time, the Brazilian military has gained increasing power in environmental policies implemented in the Amazon. Yes, even undercutting federal environmental agencies and their enforcement work. Do you think so? Uh, well, but I guess it's been pulling the military out at the same time they're doing that, the federal government is implementing its national development plan for the Amazon, which focuses on expanding industrial activity, citing modernity and progress as the order of the day. Modernity and progress are the order of the day in the Brazilian Amazon. Um, uh, let's see, uh, all right, opening the lid on toilet innovation. Uh, a new book titled Pipe Dreams, the urgent global quest to transform the toilet looks at the environmental and public health case for developing better solutions to deal with human waste. Yes, good lord. Uh, all right, we have a new beef giant in the Amazon making a sustainability pledge. Yes. <clears throat> beef giant vows to go deforestation free. 14 years from now. Well, it'll, it'll be very easy to go deforestation free in the Amazon rainforest 14 years from now because there will be no Amazon uh, rainforest 14 years uh, from now. It'll be one big cattle ranch. 
JBS, a giant company implicated in multiple cases of large-scale forest clearing in Brazil, recently made a commitment to achieve zero deforestation across its global supply chain by 2035. Yes. <laughs> Environmentalists argue that this pledge is grossly, is grossly insufficient. And a new soy and cattle deforestation tracker, JBS scored just one single point out of 100, scoring a one out of a 100 on its, uh, yeah, on its, uh, cattle deforestation tracker. Uh, <laughs> Under present conditions, Brazil is losing forest cover at the fastest rate in more than a decade, and this deforestation is driven largely by the meat packing industry. Yes. Uh, All right, here's another story of, you know, as soon as they describe a new species, they already is classified as threatened with extinction the day they discover it. This is some, a spiny new chameleon. The day they discover it, they uh, put it on the threatened with extinction list, I bet. Uh, what, speaking of extinction, what is going on with the swift parrot? The swift parrot of Tasmania. Australia's pivot to plantations may be too late for nearly extinct parrots. Critically endangered swift parrots are threatened by ongoing deforestation in the Australian state of Tasmania with recent estimates suggesting there may be fewer than 300 of the birds left in the wild. Uh, forestry operations are exempt from seeking federal environmental approvals in Australia, unlike other industries. Yep, uh, say a swift goodbye to the swift parrot. All right, what is going on with palm oil waste in Indonesia? <clears throat> palm oil waste is the latest item to be declared non-hazardous by Indonesia. A powdered clay used to clarify palm oil has been removed from Indonesia's list of hazardous waste, prompting warnings from environmental activists about an increase in dumping of untreated waste. The delisting by the government follows years of lobbying by businesses who say the treatment costs are onerous. Yes, and they want to be allowed to sell the waste known as spent bleaching earth. Don't you love that term? Spent bleaching earth, uh, which is in demand by cement producers and the construction industry. Good lord. Uh, the, re the regulation that removed this crap also delisted the ash left over from coal burning Again, at the behest of industry, do you think so? What is going on with the mangroves in Java? I didn't know there were any mangroves left in Java, but there won't be for long. Java's mangroves pay a high price for stopping plastic flowing out to sea. Mangroves are known to trap plastic waste and stop it from entering the sea, but this defense comes at a high cost to mangrove forests themselves. Researchers working in central Java found plastic carpeting half 
of the mangrove floor uh, covering roots and sediment layers and starving the trees of oxygen. The plastic garbage accumulation also harms mollusks, crabs, and other soil dwelling organisms, forming the coastal food web's foundations, which could trigger cascading impacts for larger animals. Yes. Do you believe that a coal miner that polluted in the Indonesian river got off with a slap on the wrist? Hmm. In February, a coal slurry spill in a river in Indonesia, well, of course, coal slurry is no longer a hazardous material. Uh, but back when it was a hazardous material, couple of months ago in February a coal slurry spilled in a river in Indonesian Borneo killed thousands of fish and forced downstream municipalities to cut off their water supplies. Yes, the government issued a decree <coughs> requesting that the company repair all of that crap. Uh, but activists say the official response is too light Yes, and there you go. You will not believe that in Malaysia, the fate of a peat forest hangs on a single powerful state official. <coughs> the government of Malaysia's Selangor state appears intent on rescinding protected status for the remnants of a once sprawling peat forest that is home to indigenous people and threatened wildlife. <clears throat> it wants to allow what it calls a quote mixed development project on 2300 acres of the Koala Langat North Forest Reserve, which has drawn widespread opposition from indigenous people, environmental organizations, and a former environment minister. Uh, environmental activists point to prevailing regulations that they say should shield the area from being degazetted, but state laws <clears throat> largely favor the powerful leader of Selangor. Do you think so? Uh, <coughs> Amarudin Shari heads both the state government and the board of one of the companies pushing for the development project. Okay, let's head over to a protected area in Colombia. Deforestation rises in Colombia's Chirbaketi National Park as cattle invade. Yes, Chirib Chiribiketi National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage site and the largest continental protected area in Colombia, comprising more than 4 million hectares, otherwise known as 10 million acres of land in the Colombian Amazon. But for the past several years, the Colombian Amazon has been hit harder by deforestation than any other region in the country. Do you think so? satellite data have registered an unusually high number of deforestation alerts inside the park in January. Uh, so far since September of 2020, over 1,000 hectares or 2,500 acres have uh, been obliterated out of a national park into a cattle farm. Imagine that. Um, let's look at organized crime in the Amazon. Relentless deforestation has pushed the Amazon rainforest to the brink of an ecological shift from rainforest to savanna with potentially devastating consequences for climate change 
and biodiversity. Home to most of the world's tropical forest, land left on the planet, almost all logging in the Amazon is thought to be illegal, yet few penalties are imposed on offenders. Yes, uh, but don't worry, we have a, to address the culture of impunity, a new data visualization platform called EcoCrime. EcoCrime seeks to expose the organized criminal networks that sustain the illicit trade in the Amazon. Drinking coffee in the United States? Worry about forest in Vietnam. The U.S.'s thirst for coffee drives forest loss in central Vietnam, while Germany's craving for cocoa is doing the same in West, A West Africa. A landmark study that tracks the drivers of deforestation across borders found the paper foregrounds international trade as a culprit for deforestation. Do you think so? The world's wealthy countries are, in essence, outsourcing deforestation uh, by consuming goods that pose a high risk of deforestation, especially in tropical countries, many of which are biodiversity hotspots. I'm not sure if my coffee is from Vietnam. So as long as we're on the coffee sustainability check, <clears throat> as long as we're talking about your Save the Planet organic coffee, uh, don't get me on another rant. There is no such thing. Uh, the, the very notion of organic coffee is, is one of the biggest greenwashing jokes out there. This uh, organic coffee. Yes, uh, don't get me going. Anyway, back to Manga Bay. Let's look at a coffee sustainability check. Coffee enjoys a reputation as a sustainable crop, but for many of the people who cultivate it, it is a poverty crop that is economically unviable according to the coffee barometer report. Uh, while the coffee industry as a whole is booming, most of the profits are concentrated at the retail end of the chain. Can you say Starbucks? With exporters making less than one-tenth of the revenue. Uh, and then uh, I I anyway, I could uh, go on for hours, uh, and I, you know, I have my cup of coffee every morning. What is going on with the maned wolves in the Cerrado? I guess they no longer have manes. The Cerrado's maned wolves, squeezed by humans, picking up mange from dogs. Eight maned wolves losing their fur have been seen along the border between the states of Sao Paulo and Minas Gerais in Brazil. They were diagnosed with sarcoptic mange, otherwise known as canine scabies. Jesus. Uh, researchers suspect it's the result of contact with domestic dogs which increasingly come into contact with wildlife as humans' activities eat into the wolf's habitat. The transformation of the species' native Cerrado habitat for soy cultivation and cattle ranching combined with the clearing of vegetation in the Amazon and Atlantic rainforest have pushed the maned wolf into these latter landscapes in recent years. Yes, kiss goodbye the maned wolf. And uh, anyway, guys, uh, I could probably go on with this, but uh, I see some things in the yard I need to pick up before the big blow. 
This was the opening salvo. I guess we're looking at two inches, over two inches of rain in the next 24 hours. So uh, bring it on and get out there and enjoy your rainy day in the collapse while you still can. Uh, I notice it is now, it is 74 degrees and bright sunshine in Ithaca, New York. Uh, <laughs> It is a warm, sunny day in Ithaca, New York, and a cold, rainy day in Florida, but I am not complaining. Bye, guys.